the other thing that you need to focus on is BI, the BIW of Toyota Yaris. Not Toyota Yaris, but the BIW of the component that you are trying to you know, perform crash, crash worthiness test on. So first question, what does BIW stand for? BIW stands for body in white. Well, what does body in white mean, guys? The sheet metal components, exactly. Body in white refers to the sheet metal components that basically form the underlying structure of your car. Okay, now if you do not understand that, like the reason why people do crashworthiness on that is ultimately that basically controls how energy is dissipated. Okay, how energy is dissipated in your entire model. And this is something that gets very commonly changed uh, especially to meet targets, okay? Because at the end of the day, this determines the strength of your car. It determines the rigidity of your car. So, you know, your final answer lies here. This is your first line of defense. You can think of it like that. Before we, uh, you know, like one of the things that people do is they look at individual components, right? Because design and optimization is done on individual parts in a company. So it's good to understand or good to know what are the types of components that people look at. You know, like bumper safety. You know, that's tested a lot. Front rails, a shotgun, hinge pillar, ABC pillars, uh, and then uh, roof bow headers. So these are all the components that are designed for crash worthiness because they dictate how the energy is going to dissipate it from the impact zone to around the passengers, okay? So like how do, how do, how do the companies approach it? Well, you actually take the car, you split it into three components. So you have upper body vehicles, underbody, underbody vehicles, so not upper body components, underbody components, and your BIW components, okay? Um, you take all these components and you individually optimize them. And then you put, you, if you take all of these together, you get your entire car. And then once you have that, you perform crash testing on it. And then based on the data that you get, sometimes there are individual teams that are looking at underbody, upper body, and BIW. But in some, some, uh, in some companies, there's just one team looking at all the components. But usually it's just one person that's looking at one component. Okay, so it's, it's typically one engineer for every few components. And those few components are typically belong to either BAW or U, upper body or underbody. Okay, so this is one thing. The other thing that you need to understand is different countries have different protocols. And why is that? Well, first of all, depending on the geographical conditions, right? The roads are smaller in certain countries based on which the speed limit is different, based on which um, the size of the car is also different, okay? In addition to this, in certain countries, if you take the frame of a general person, if you take an average person, the average weight and height of the person differs. There is also a parameter called as pedestrian impact. And that's the, that's the thing that you actually look at in the bottom right image. I, this is one of the, this is a very interesting image. Uh, looks like there are three questions or three comments. Yes, so UPV stands for upper vehicle and UNV stands for under vehicle, but typically it's much easier to understand it as underbody and upper body. So anyway, as I was saying, if you look at this bottom right image, that's called as pedestrian impact. What does that mean? So let us say that a car is coming and then there's a person standing, right? So when, if the car actually hits the person, the person's upper leg is going to impact here, if it's a child, its head is going to basically get impacted in this particular zone. It should fall on the bonnet, that's correct. But where should they fall on the bonnet? That changes. Similarly, if it's an adult head, it basically falls slightly above. Now, if you take a look at your bonnet, the reason why you can deform the bonnet so easily, for example, just take your hand and punch the bonnet, right? You will see that you can deform it very easily. If this is not being done because the material is weak or something. This is being done on purpose. Okay, because if, if this happens to a child and when the child's head hits the bonnet, if you use solid metal there, the child's skull is going to crack open almost immediately. The reason why the bonnet is soft is because it is going to deform. And then when it deforms, it basically dissipates energy. Just think about it like this. So if you take a look at airbags, right? The airbag is like a balloon. So the balloon pops, but then the moment that your head hits the balloon, what's going to happen? it's going to actually burst open. So whatever energy that your, your head is actually imparting to the balloon, it's going to get dissipated away so that you get less reaction force. If the balloon is not dissipating anything, you are going to get the entire reaction force back to your head, Newton's third law, right? And that's just going to open your skull. 
and that is why you know bonnets are designed in such a way that in the middle of the bonnet it's very very soft you can punch it very easily but if you go a bit more higher towards the windshield it becomes harder because that's where an adult head is supposed to hit and adults can typically take a little bit more impact so so it's amazing so the amount of engineering that goes into each of these components is just amazing so as engineers right you need to kind of at this at this point you might not have access to materials like this where you can you know do analysis but you can actually read about these things and cultivating that knowledge is what you need to focus on because these are things that are relevant and in india you would know that there is typically uh, the, the the crash regulation programs in india are very very weak but this year there is actually a new car assessment program i don't know if you have heard of it uh, the final details are not out out there yes it's called as ncap that's correct so once the final regulations are out uh, you will be able to understand like you will you will see that the new cars that are coming maybe next year or the year after that will have most of this uh, um will will have most of these uh, standards now yes we indian cars you know we basically we basically look at euro cap now we need to understand that especially for indian cars lot of things are not done correctly as in the reason why the cars are a bit cheaper and you can see that airbags are not uh, compulsory they are more like a luxury right and this is purely i like if you ask me this is this is purely political because in in the us like i'm currently in the us and if you see here you can actually get a a new chevy a chevrolet cruze which i think the same car model exists in india and here you can actually purchase the car for $12000 which is about 7 lakhs right and for 7 lakhs you get automatic transmission you get airbags and you get rear view camera because rear view camera is an important safety device so in the us in a few more years rear view camera is going to be standard okay but if you take a look at indian cars i'm pretty sure the cost is very similar they would charge similar pricing for the cars but none of these devices are compulsory they are they are in india it's marketed as luxury devices right which is very very unfortunate because if if you if they have done a lot of research and if they have found that airbags help you know they can they airbag is the difference between life and death in an accident they should make it compulsory and the companies should figure out a way to make it cheaper so that cheaper but still safer right that's what drives innovation but unfortunately those things are not being done which is purely political because the the only person who can actually put pressure on these organizations these companies to do these things is the government at the end of the day uh, are there any more regulations uh no like there are definitely a few more regulations out there uh so for example there are uh, regulations on how like how much rolling can takes place in a car when the car travels over a bend at a particular speed so all those things are there and also nowadays uh if you go to rear seats uh in us or in, even in europe they have something called as a child seat so the child she- the child seat is like a shell like structure which you place in the rear seat of the car and it's 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 called as a child seat though child restraint is basically the system that actually keeps the keeps the child in place okay so the child seat is placed in such a way that uh, the child actually looks at the back side uh, looks at the rear door okay